causing deep cracks. Some pavement blocks on the footbridge have also removed. Residents around the Abofu area say the height of the track was higher than the bridge, but it forced its way through. Car no free them and ever, but speed now they need too much. To that machine or form. The track was coming from Tema with a top speed and his machine was higher than the footbridge. Looking at the height, he should have either dropped the machine on the track or returned back. But because of the uncontrollable speed, he drove under the footbridge with force resulting in a shift on one side. Many authorities have come to inspect alongside some engineers, but to no avail. You panic each time you pass on it. You feel it may collapse. It's scary. It's scary. Users say they are afraid the bridge would collapse anytime soon. Me, myself, sometimes when I, I'm crossing it, I do fear for myself. But the other people, I don't know how they feel. I'm sure they will feel the same thing like how I feel. When we are passing there, Nothing written to show us that this is a danger. But I know that people are passing there. So if they are no writing anything and they are repairing, it means that nothing will happen. If it is danger, the people will tell us. There are authority here. There are police people. Everything they will tell us. So as they are not, if they are right now something, they will and won't pass again. Yes, that's why. So me, I think that they are taking care of us. So if there's something is no good, they will tell us. I don't like it at all because these things can cause a lot of trouble. Because when it trains very hard, it doesn't have any strong. So we have to feel some safe within us. Even though engineers from the Ghana Highway Authority have inspected the facility three weeks ago, nothing has been done about it. They want the Ghana Highway Authority to fix it as soon as possible to prevent a disaster. And that was Irene Okai's report read to you. Now, the family of a man killed at the Castro Millennium City by some soldiers last year is dragging the military high command to court. This comes after a service inquiry conducted by the military high command concluded that the soldiers were only acting in self-defense when they shot at three people during a demolition exercise by the 21st Century Construction Company. The family has rejected the military's report as they suspect a cover-up. Joseph Opokugapo has been following the story and now reports. Where I find myself now is where all the action happened. The clash between some of the residents in this community and the military persons who had come around to supervise the demolition of some of the houses. The demolished structure that you see here and a number of others in the community did not happen easily. It actually cost the life of one resident and three others were left injured as a result of this particular incident. Well, the residents here are not happy that the military persons are insisting that their men who supervised the demolition exercise did absolutely nothing wrong when they shot at some of the residents. My name is uh, Dr. Rufai Ahmed. I'm the chairman of Gomwenyano Development Association. It's a committee that is supposed to set, uh, that is supposed to work for uh, the residents and the military should have been a composition of the military and also the residents and maybe the police so that there will be a very fair distance so that everybody's view will be captured. But unfortunately, we were not contacted. The residents were not contacted. The family of the disease were not contacted. Chaotic scenes there from the incident on the 3rd of September last year. Two people were shot in the leg and one, Mike Lasaridako, aged 30, was hit in the head. He died later at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. A copy of the autopsy report signed by Dr. L. Edusei, who joined news as intercepted, gave two reasons for the death. High-velocity gunshot injury and fractured skull with cerebral convulsion. Military police sources say the soldiers returned from the operation having spent 10 bullets. They told investigators they were in the area to maintain order, but the crowd attacked them with sticks and stones. They responded with fire because they were, quote, frightened. They feared they would have been lynched if they had not acted. Head of Public Affairs at the Ghana Armed Forces, Colonel Eric Agrikwashi, tells Joy News the residents were incited against the soldiers. Do you know that particular incident? Joy FM went to lay ambush for us. Joy FM knew that the soldiers were going there. And so why, why would Joy FM go and lay ambush 
for military people. N yeah, he actually no, so got the hands you, and then you, he rushed yeah. to the scene. Not you, that we you, laid you were I'm there not sure even before. Yes. So you, you see, we also do our own investigations and found out that you want to lay ambush for us. Uh, so, so you even were preempting that all oh, these soldiers will come and misbehave. So even when they go there, somebody could even uh, instigate them. Because they were trying to against them. But that one, nobody reported that. Oh, so the investigations have shown that they were really not responsible for any, no, they, any bad acts at all? No. The people went there to perform a duty and they were exchanges. And yeah. the personnel who are responsible are still within the service. No action has been taken against them. No, what, no, if I send somebody to go and perform a duty and something goes wrong, what sort of action do I have to I can't dismiss them from the service if, because if they have not asked them to go and perform the duty, that incident would have happened. So you can't dismiss them from their forces. But you, people, those, you, you look at it, if there were SSS, yes, then you punish them accordingly. But the type of punishment the media is expecting, it might not be that type, the type of punishment that will be... Has any punishment been meted out at all from what That one is within our circus. And so we know how to deal with our people when they do things outside their, uh, what, the, the tax that is given them. The residents deny attacking the soldiers. Zongo chief of the area, Saki Tairu Abdallah, was on the ground that day. Old women, children, the community as a, as, as a whole were there. And you said people attacked you. Who attacked who? If really the military knows that they are coming to visit their land or site, why were they with arm? Three, three men with arm. What intention do they have? What negative mind do they have against the community? That they came in arms. They came fully armed with ammo cars. They shot somebody's son down because of a property, fighting for his right. In Ghana, they say democracy, democracy. What is the democracy? Joy News understands the homicide unit of the Ghana Police Service is also conducting a parallel criminal investigation into the incident, details of which are unavailable. For Joy News, Joseph Upokugabo reporting. Right, so uh, that's the report that Joseph Upokugabo has put together. Already we've heard from some of the family members, uh, the brother of the man who died, Michael, uh, raising issues uh, with the details of that inquiry by the Ghana Armed Forces on this matter. We've, we've been trying to get in touch with the Ghana Armed Forces today for some responses and answer some questions relating to uh, this report they've put together and how come the, the ordinary punishment for someone who's killed another will not be uh, pursued to the latter. We've been unable to reach uh, them for any official comments on the matter. We also know that uh, the family have asked their lawyer to start the process, begin drafting the legal documents for the suit against the Ghana Armed Forces. We'll bring you details. Uh, we can now speak to group captain or being in team. Uh, we can now speak to him. Uh, he's a lawyer for the family of the man uh, who was killed in that incident at the Kaswa Millennium City. Good afternoon to you, group captain. Good afternoon. Right, so we're learning that the family has decided to sue the Ghana Armed Forces. Give us some details. Why, how did you reach this decision? Um, in the first place, um, distantly, they deceased. So when the incident happened, the family came to me that uh, I should pursue uh, the matter on their behalf, which I did. Hello? Uh, yes, I'm listening, sir, group captain. Should I go on? Yes, sir, go on. Yes, sir, go on. Me? Go on. Very well. So, uh, I wrote to the CID headquarters and then made two visits, one to the military police, uh, military police headquarters and the other to the chief of staff's office. I met the then chief of staff who said, who told us that uh, the issue was one involving uh, a death of a, a civilian. So it had a um, uh, police angle. So they were waiting for the report from the uh, from the civil police. Also, they had conducted, they, they were conducting 
investigation into the incident on their level, that is uh, the military level, military angle, mm. and that uh, the military police were handling it. They were handling it, so we should wait for the report to be brought. Uh, we waited for some time, the report wasn't coming, so I did a second visit to the chief of staff's office uh, about two ago. And uh, he also said the report was still not in, that they will wait. So uh, I'm, I'm, I must say that I'm surprised that uh, this afternoon I heard on Story FM that the report had been sent in and the military message were not culpable. Okay. So in view of what you've heard and, and the details we've provided, on how the gun officers have reached this decision on the soldiers. What's the family's line of action? What do they want as they seek to sue the high command? Yes. Uh, I must be honest and tell you that uh, our main motive is not to ask that somebody be held criminally liable for what had happened. Our main motive is to ask for compensation for their family. Why? Because, because they've lost a boy, a man in the prime of his life. He left behind a wife and a child who needs it to be looked after. So I believe it's only appropriate that uh, prudent that we seek for compensation for the wife, uh, the children, and uh, the family. Okay, and for the family, as they seek compensation, how much are we talking about? How much do they want? Um... As at now, I am unable to uh, tell how much compensation we are going after. Mm. But I believe if the, that is the one from the police and the one from the military, if they are made available to us, then we we'll, and then see how much compensation we will demand for the bereaved family. Group Captain, am, am I to understand that for the man who shot Michael, the family is not interested in pursuing them? Well, you see, when murder is committed, it is for the state to pursue the, 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 the culprit. We, as lawyers, we are not interested in the person Lawyers of the family, we are not interested in the punishment being meted out to the person. Oh, that is uh, the, the government's responsibility. What we want is compensation for the family. That is all. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Group Captain Obain Team, for your time. Uh, he's a lawyer for the family of the man who got shot uh, in September 2015 by soldiers at the Kaswa Millennium City. <laughs>